Hey up guys, so today on the channel we're talking RuPaul's Drag Race UK Season 2 Episode 4. This week the Queens tested their improv skills as hosts of a new daytime drag TV show called Modern Glory. Not the most exciting challenge, in fact this was probably my least favourite of all the maxi challenges we've had so far this season. It wasn't bad, it just wasn't particularly memorable. All tea, no shade. But that's not to say this episode didn't have its talking points, there was plenty to enjoy. We had a redemption arc for a horror, a controversial lip sync when Ginny Lemon walked off the stage just mere seconds after the song started, and the biggest gag of all was the little sneak preview of next week's episode when we saw production come to a halt because of COVID-19. The mini challenge this week was a bit hit or miss with the whole Great British fake off, but Bimini Bomboulash ended up winning this challenge by avoiding the smutty humour. That's gotta be a first for Drag Race history. Then the Queens paired up for the main challenge as co-hosts for different segments of the daytime talk show. You had Taze and Bimini being the hosts, you had Tia and Ahura being the Essex girls on a budget, you had Veronica Green and Sister Sister as the gothy party planners, you had the Scottish Queens, Lawrence Cheney and Ellie Diamond as the dragony ants, and then finally you had Ginny Lemon by herself being the kooky, weirdly Australian <laughs> weather lady. And the results were interesting to say the least. The most surprising pairing was definitely Tia and Ahura. The two Nottingham Queens are very chalk and cheese with each other and Ahura's made no secret of calling Tia basic so there's definitely been some friction there between them. And you just knew those two working together was gonna go one of two ways. It was either going to be a disaster or is going to be surprisingly good. And thankfully it was the latter. They turned chalk and cheese into tits and teeth. <laughs> they had a good dynamic because they both have skills that the other one doesn't have. So they both learned a little something from each other. Tia helped Ahura to be funny and Ahura helped Tia to look more presentable. <laughs> that the word? I don't know if that's the right word when they look like two Essex girls out on the town, but yeah, they, they look good. They look very on brand of the uh, Essex girl look. And it was just nice to see Ahura let go and be silly and have fun in this challenge. The gravel panties was a nice touch. But then shit got real in the workroom. Ahura and Tia started to bond. I mean, they weren't braiding each other's hair or anything, but it did lead to some interesting revelations about Ahura. And finally, it felt like a human being arrived. Hearing how she grew up and that she was bullied for being camped and how others constantly dragged her down, she ended up dragging other people down with her as a coping mechanism, and that's kind of what she was doing to Tia last week, you know, behind her back. So it was in that moment where she exposed her insecurities and vulnerabilities that I finally connected with her on a human level. Dare I say, I might be starting to like her. We need to see if she can maintain this nicer, softer side of Ahura in subsequent episodes, but all in all, it was a great episode for Ahura. Veronica Green and Sister Sister as a couple of party planning goths, one word, awkward. Neither of them did particularly well here. Veronica was in her own head, but at least she did have a little bit of characterization. She was very deadpan. There were a couple bits where I could see what she was doing, but sister, sister, God, I've seen more life in a plank of wood. She was just there, like awkwardly smiling through the challenge, not really contributing much. And when she did try to make a joke, nothing landed. Being goth, all you have to do is look bored as fuck, roll your eyes and be over it all the time. There's a great irony in being a party planner when you're a party pooper. But yeah, they were both a bit painful to watch. But the real stars of this challenge, in my opinion, were Bimini Bamboulash and Tace. They were bubbly, they had good banter, and they made it look effortless. Ginny Lemon as the weather lady was frantic and bonkers, but it didn't really go anywhere. There wasn't much weather in her weather slot. As for the Scottish queens, Lawrence Cheney did very well in this challenge. You can tell she's one of those queens who, if you just give a microphone to in a pub, she could have everyone howling, have a, a good time, not needing to do any dance numbers or songs or whatever. She can just talk and people will have a great time. She's one of those queens. And those skills are very transferable to this type of challenge, which is why she did do really well. But she carried Ellie Diamond across the finish line because she did not stand out next to Lawrence Cheney. Or in her words, she didn't shine bright like a diamond. Oh yeah, what was with that really awkward outburst in the workroom with RuPaul when she said to RuPaul, why don't you say Ellie Diamond in a Scottish accent like Lawrence Cheney? I was just like, oh my God, did you really just ask that? Like Tia Coffey said, that was a big question. <laughs> it's like a, a, 
I don't know, like a jealous child who's upset that their parents gave a nickname to their sibling, but not to them. <laughs> It's not what she said, it's the way she said it. There was a better way of phrasing that. It just came out a little blunt, Ellie Diamonds. <laughs> that is television's RuPaul Charles you're talking to. As for the runway looks, the category was Monster Mash. My favorites of this runway were Veronica Green for her pig meets Medusa look, and wait for it, Tia Coffee. <laughs> oh yes, I absolutely adored her skeleton, high priestess look. I think that's the best that she's looked all season. And I also really liked Ahura's look. I didn't know what monster she was trying to go for, but you could see the horror influences in the look and the scalped brain thing was pretty cool. And the devil was in the details. But as for looks that I didn't like this week, Sister Sister's mummy look. God, if you're gonna come on Drag Race and do something as pedestrian as a mummy, you've got to do something that excites and amazes the judges. Like that's an outfit that would look good at you know, a Halloween party in the glory on Halloween night, but God, RuPaul's Drag Race, if it looks like something someone could do at home, like if you just bin the boots and pick up a bunch of bandages and stuff some blue fur, why blue fur? But yeah, it just, it looked kind of basic. It looked like something anyone could make at home. And with mummies, they've been done before on RuPaul's Drag Race and done a lot better. Also, another look I wasn't crazy about was Tace's Vampire Bride look. I didn't get a lot of vampire other than just like the fangs. I mean, the gown itself was nice, but I don't know, there just wasn't a lot of wow factor in the concept. As for tops and bottoms, the tops of this week were Bimini Bamboo Lash, Ahura, and Lawrence Cheney, who ended up being the winner. That's two in a row for the Scottish Queen. Uh, she's definitely gonna be in the top three, I bet. As for the bottom three queens, we had Ginny Lemon, Sister Sister, and Veronica Green. Veronica Green ended up being saved, so the lip sync was between Sister Sister and Ginny Lemon, or oh, so we thought. Don't think I've ever seen a one person lip sync on Drag Race. Has it happened before? But yeah, let's talk about that lip sync. <sighs> I don't know how I feel about Ginny Lemon walking out of the lip sync. She said she did it because she didn't want to lip sync against her best friend in the competition, Sister Sister, and that she also did it for herself. I get being tapped out mentally and wanting to leave the competition. Like, if you're ready, you're ready. But she still could have left with her head held high and without disrespecting RuPaul. She knew what she was getting into when she signed up for this show. Lip syncs are part of the Drag Race format. Yes, lip syncing against a friend might not be something that you want to do, but sometimes you have to do stuff that makes you uncomfortable, especially in something that you've signed up for beforehand. She could have done the lip sync and held back, not given it 100% or put her heart into it. There's ways to convey to RuPaul that you're ready to leave the competition in a lip sync without actually walking out of the lip sync. I like Ginny Lemon and I respect her as a queen, but I don't think walking off was the best choice. It just reads as rude and ungrateful. I know she said it was punk, but not everyone's gonna see it that way. But when she did write her lipstick message, it didn't feel like she was being spiteful or malicious or whatnot. She was just leaving on her own terms, and that is something, I guess. So yeah, I'm a bit confuddled as to how I feel with Ginny Lemon's exit, but what about you guys? What do you think of Ginny Lemon Bender la creming herself? Let me know in that comment section down below. But yes, next week we get two episodes. One explaining what happened to the queens in like the seven month hiatus, and then also we'll get another one where the competition kick starts again. Maybe we'll jump into the snatch game or something. I'm not sure, but we all know there's going to be a gag. There has to be. What do you guys think is going to happen? Glenn and I have a theory that because RuPaul loves second chances and what with the whole coronavirus pandemic, yada, 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 that they're gonna wanna bring at least one of the eliminated queens back, you know, give them a second chance. So that's our theory. Do you guys have any others? If you do, let me know in that comment section down below. If you guys have enjoyed this video, hit that like button. If you want more movie, TV, Drag Race and Oscars coverage, don't forget to click subscribe. And if you want to follow me on any social media, Twitter, Instagram, Letterbox, all in that video description down below. But thanks so much for watching guys for more things related to movies, TV, and popcorn culture. I'm Luke Harefield, and I'll see you down the slot hut.